Hi, I'm David with Portrait Displays, and in this video, we're going to walk through using Cowman with the AGA Color Box to perform a calibration. Let's get started. I'm going to come over to my computer here and launch Cowman. Today we're running Cowman Studio, but you can run Cowman Studio or Cowman Ultimate to work with the AGA Color Box. Okay, with Cowman now launched on my computer, let's come up to the top left corner and click on the Cowman icon. Come down to Open Workflow Template. Let's come down to Display Specific, and we're going to choose the AutoCal AGA Color Box Workflow. On the first page of the workflow, we have an option here to select what range we're working in. Are we working in SDR or are we working in HDR? What this is going to do is set the calibration targets within the workflow to either an SDR default or an HDR default. For the purpose of this demo, let's set it to SDR. Let's press next in the bottom right corner. And on this page, it's asking us to set up our hardware. Here, we're gonna to wanna to find our meter. Today, I'm using the Portrait Displays C6 HDR5000 colorimeter. So I'm gonna come over here to find meter, press find meter. I'm gonna make sure all meters except those listed below are selected. I'm gonna press search. Okay, as we'll see, we've now connected to the Portrait Display C6 HDR5000 here in the top right corner. So we're going to want to do one more thing here. We're going to want to choose the meter profile or the calibration profile for our Portrait Display C6 HDR5000. So we're going to click here under meter, and we're going to select the ASO CG319X. Now, why are we selecting that? We're selecting that because this happens to be the ASO CG319X. I encourage you, when doing your calibration, to use the meter profile that best matches the technology that you're measuring. Our next step here is to connect to the AGA color box. To do so, we're going to want to know the IP address of the color box on our network. You can do that by using the eMini setup app available at AJA.com and using the USB port in the front, or you could sniff out your network, or perhaps you already know the IP address on your local network. I already know my IP address, so I'm going to enter it in Calman now. Once you've entered your IP address, press Find AJA Color Box. What you're going to notice here in the top right corner is the AGA color box ends up being our pattern source or our pattern generator and the direct display control or the calibration target device that we're going to be using here. We're going to use the built-in pattern generator from the AGA color box that's been integrated into Calman as well as the display control in order to load the LUTs into the device. You'll notice in the top right corner, Calman is connecting as the pattern source and the display control. Once you're connected, let's press next. And now we're on our calibration target page of the workflow. Here you're going to want to choose the calibration targets that you'd like to achieve during your calibration session. The default for SDR, as you can see here, is BT709 with a BT1886 EOTF. For the purpose of this demo, let's change this EOTF to power and set it to 2.4. We'll leave our Delta E formula at ITP and we'll leave our single range in video 16 to 235. Of course, if you'd like to perform a full range calibration, you can change it here. Let's press next. At this point, we're on the application settings page of the workflow. This page allows us to set our pattern insertion or pattern stabilization based on the type of display technology that we're measuring. With the ASO CG 319X, we're measuring an LCD that doesn't have any local dimming, so I'm not too worried about the pattern insertion or pattern stabilization. I'm going to leave these off. Let's press next. Now we are at our pre-calibration measure page. Of course, I haven't quite set my portrait display C6 colorimeter up on my display yet. Going to be kind of hard to make a measurement without it. So in order to do so, I'm going to come over to the AGA color box pattern source here in my menu, click on it. I'm going to come down to specialty patterns and I'm going to load the sharpness pattern. That pattern is going to put up a grid from the AGA color box and now allow me to open my diffuser on my C6 HDR5000 and try to align this as close to center of the screen as I'm able. Okay. With our C6 HDR5000 now positioned on the screen, Cowman connected to the AGA color box is the pattern source. Cowman connected to the portrait display's colorimeter as the meter. We're now ready to take our pre-calibration measurement. Let's press measure in the top right corner. Okay, we've completed our pre-calibration measurement here, and it looks like we have quite a bit of room for improvement. Now, it's important to note that we do have some LUTs potentially loaded in the AJ color box already, and uh, the display has been put in its closest to native state. So we're not quite sure exactly where all that's going to land, which is why I think we're seeing this like it is, and uh, certainly leaves us a lot of room for improvement as we work through the calibration process. Let's press next 
So here we are on a display reset page. On this page, what we're gonna do is choose the preset or the memory on the AJ color box we'd like to write our calibration to and press reset to get it into a null state so that we're all ready to do our calibration. We don't wanna have any LUTs that are active while we're also profiling because then we'd be profiling on top of a correction. So we wanna make sure we have no correction loaded, perform the calibration and then load the correction in. You'll notice I actually have quite a bit of memories here and I've also done a quite a bit of LUTs as I've been playing around with the AGA color box. I'm gonna choose number five here. So you'll notice number five has no naming, meaning it is completely blank. I'm gonna hit reset anyway. Now Cowman is going to reset it so that there's no 1D LUTs, no 3D LUTs, no matrices that are in that memory so that we can do the profile. So we've now reset memory number five, but you'll also notice that there's open display panel on the right here and some instructions about the startup preset. Let's hit open display panel. On the right, you'll see the startup preset list. Here we can set the startup preset so that every time the AGA is booted up, it's gonna to go to the exact same memory. This is an excellent feature if you're running around a movie set, if you're moving between facilities, and you always wanna make sure that you come up with the exact same setting. Because we're calibrating memory five, I'm gonna set the startup preset to five. I'm gonna want it to always boot up in the mode I last did. Of course, you may not always want it to boot up in the mode you last did, so choose the mode that works best for you. Once you've chosen your startup preset, you can choose your video signal range that you're performing the calibration in if you've changed it. We're gonna leave it in video 16 to 235 and press next. At this point, we're at the 1D LUT calibration process of our calibration workflow. But there are a couple more things I'd like you to be aware of. Make sure your display is actually in the range that you've set Cowman to calibrate in. With the ASO CG319X, we actually have three settings that we can use here. We have a narrow range or limited range, 16 to 235. We've got our extended range or super right range, 16 to 255, and we've also got full range. I'm gonna go in the menu real quick, and I'm gonna change the signal. I'm gonna press menu, signal, and I'm gonna come down here to input range. I'm gonna change the input range to limited for 16 to 235 for the purpose of the calibration. Now you don't always have to do that. You can leave it in the auto mode, but you wanna make sure that the auto mode is matching what your source is gonna be in. So if the source happens to be in, let's say 16 to 235, but the display is going into 16 to 255, you may not be profiling the entire range of the display. So I like to, as best practice, set my source and my display up to match each other identically so there's no chance I might have to do this again because something wasn't quite right. With our display now in its native mode, in the same range as the AJA color box, let's now press the AutoCal button in the top right corner here. And now you'll notice we have the AutoCal setup with active grayscale points. You'll notice that we have video ranges and simply extended ranges. Well, I set the display up to 16 to 235, so I'm gonna to wanna to be in one of these video ranges. And for the purpose of this demo, I'm gonna do a 21 point grayscale. So I'm gonna use 21 points to measure to then calculate my 1D LUT that gets loaded into the AGA. So with this set to 21 point video, let's press okay. And Calman's now gonna run through the 1D LUT process. Okay, our auto calibration of the 1D LUT has completed. We're gonna press okay. And let's press next here in the bottom right corner. Okay, we're now at the point in the workflow to perform the 3D LUT calibration. To do so, let's press the AutoCal button here in the top right. We're now at the point in the AutoCal setup where we're able to choose a couple things. If we want a startup delay where we can turn off the lights and leave the room, we can set a startup delay here. This allows us to take a few minutes, prep the room, leave, especially when we're doing longer LUTs. For the purpose of this demo, I'm gonna leave the startup delay on. Because I've already done a 1D LUT and I'm working in SDR, I'm gonna leave my set 3D LUT grayscale to Unity. Next, I have to choose my calibration type. I have a number of options here. I have lightning LUT, fixed grid nine, 13, etc. Because the ASO CG319X has now been calibrated with a 1D LUT, and I know the gamut mapping on this monitor is pretty predictable, I'm actually gonna perform a matrix LUT. So let's choose matrix LUT and press okay. All right, our 3D calibration is completed. We're gonna press OK and click Next. And now we're at the point of our post-calibration measure. So let's come up to the top right and press Measure. 
Okay, so our post calibration measure has completed. We can take a look at our delta E chart here on the bottom and see most of our delta E's are actually very, very, very low. And we've also got our delta E 2000 here on the color checker in the bottom left here, very, very low. And if you come up here to display performance, you can actually look at the delta E value. So our grayscale has a max of about 1.5 delta E with an average of uh, 0.66. That's actually very, very good, especially since we're measuring down near black and we do have a lot of light in this room that is shining on the display and probably uh, causing a little bit of interference near black given that we are so bright here in the studio. And if we look at our color checker, we've got a max of about 0.58 with an average of about 0.32. So that's actually very, very good. And uh, everything seems to have come out as we expect. So let's press next. And now we're at the calibration complete page in our workflow. Now there are a couple options that we can do here. One, we can restart the calibration. That'll start the workflow over and allow us to target maybe something else for SDR, maybe do an HDR calibration. Remember, we wrote to preset number five on the AJ color box and we have 10 presets, which means we can do nine more calibrations with Calman and set up multiple standards and multiple use cases. So you might want to restart and do that if that's your intention. You can also save and view a report, which will let you save out a report for yourself or your customer if you happen to be doing this for a customer or you can perform additional validation where you click on the additional validation and you can now do uh, an enhanced color checker as well as saturation sweeps to see how well your calibration came out in more metrics. I hope you enjoyed our video. We'll catch you on the next one.